As I've been making my stroll down memory lane, I've reviewed Limbo and Inside, atmospheric and fairly abstract puzzle platformers from Playdead, and those are both games that I walked away loving. Well, there hasn't been a new game from Playdead since 2016, but my eyes did fall on Somerville, a game from the new studio Jump Ship that was co-founded by one of the leads that left Playdead. So you can kind of see why I was fairly excited for this game going into it, but Unfortunately, at release, I didn't have time to play it. But now, you know, as a base level, I have to say I finally played the game, and it left me disappointed. I, I can't lie. But, you know, we'll get into that. Somerville launched for Xbox and PC on November 14th of 2022 for $24.99 US dollars, and of course on Game Pass as well, and all that's going to get you about four hours of playtime. So if any of this stuff already counts you out, then goodbye, I guess. But otherwise, let's break this down into my usual core four categories. The story, the gameplay, the visuals, and of course, the sound design. Right off the bat, Somerville starts off its story insanely strong, setting emotional stakes all without a single line of dialogue. You are separated from your family during an alien invasion, and you must try to find them against all odds. The eeriness and complete ignorance of the protagonist and the player are compounded in such a way that when events start to happen within the world, it really does make it feel in the vein of War of the Worlds, which is a really good movie. Personally, I really love this, and it accentuates the early goings of the story as really, really good. In the first part of the journey, there is so much cinematic framing to telling a unique thriller narrative that had me on edge pretty much the entire time. That sense of intrigue and urgency to find your family fizzles out about halfway through, though, as you become accustomed to the rules of the new world that you inhabit. By then, the character is wandering without a destination, and that to me doesn't make me feel like I'm actually looking for my family, rather I'm just trying to find the next puzzle. Now, when the time comes, the story naturally has a few of those moments that do invoke emotion, and that's one of the game's strengths, narratively speaking. And while I didn't enjoy the second half of the game, one thing that I do want to give props though is the ending. There are multiple endings to the game, and it's really easy to actually reload that final checkpoint and get all of these endings. That's entirely what it's based off of. There aren't really collectibles that you need in that sense. There are multiple endings to the game, and it's really easy to reload that final checkpoint and get them all, as it isn't tied to any uh, collectibles. And all of the endings make sense. Uh, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> now throw in some actually really cool sci-fi concepts and you've got yourself a really unfortunate story of a great premise wasted on some meh execution in the second half. They had me in the first half, not gonna lie. But let me explain a little bit further with the gameplay because I feel like the story and the gameplay go hand in hand here. The main loop in Somerville is to solve puzzles and escape danger in an effort to move forward and find your family. One aspect that I praised Playdead's inside for was the free flow and fluid motion of the player character. In Somerville, that's far from the case. The number one thing that you're doing in Somerville is moving. First off, it's easy to get stuck on edges of the path when you're in a chase sequence. Plus, I've had multiple issues where the doors just refuse to let me in on the first attempt. Then, even when you are moving throughout a story bit, the game refuses to let you move any faster. In segments where the protagonist is hurt, yes, I understand, but there are plenty of segments where this motherfucker is literally just walking for no reason. Where's the urgency? Where is any of it? He can run, I've seen it. So ultimately, I don't know that switching to a 3D plane for movement really paid off in the end. One subversion though that I did actually enjoy as far as movement and traversal goes is the persistence of moving left rather than moving to the right side of the screen. And to me, this kind of makes everything feel a little bit more unnatural. That's not the norm. Mario didn't do it. Inside didn't do it. And to me, I think this does actually fit really well into the themes of the game as well. So tying into the story a little bit, I think that's actually one good gameplay aspect. Another aspect of the gameplay that I thought was lesser from quote-unquote previous titles was that there is no jump button here. Instead, Jump Ship opted for a new puzzle input in the form of your uh, superpowers? or at least your ability to manipulate an alien substance into solids and liquids. But we'll say superpowers, I think that's just easier to do. I actually like this mechanic a lot. You need to use a light source, be it a lamppost, a flare, or even a car's headlights to amplify your abilities. Breaking down alien structures to pass obstacles, or even solidifying a pool of liquid into a bridge are some of the more basic examples. Though I will say the game goes all in with this. 
The more you melt, you'll actually amass more of a body of liquid, filling up to reach new areas, or even solidifying a mass around an object to hold it in place. This to me all feels really really cool and it lets you play out all of the science fiction that I talked about earlier. And the use of physics is always something that I really really enjoy in puzzle games. Now as I've already said, Somerville isn't on a 2D plane, at least not fully. There's plenty of sections in 3D spaces, much to my dismay. Movement issues I've already addressed aside, the big puzzle areas that require you moving back and forth multiple times to move on feel really exhausting here. I believe this is mostly due to the slow movement I've already mentioned and, quite frankly, some obtuse puzzle logic at times. And what I mean by that obtuse nature is that sometimes it feels like there's too much effort for what's actually going on. Like, why do I need to raise this bus up when I can just walk down the street and walk around it? At least when I was on a 2D plane in the other games, it kind of felt like, hey, I have to do just this. But in this game, it teases you with the idea of being able to move around something by being in a 3D space. I know I'm being a little iffy on that, but you kind of see what I mean. Another issue I actually did notice with the puzzles in the game, around the midpoint of the game I noticed this, there are a lot of puzzles that do have fail states where you can die or something happens that you need to go back, and the checkpoints are pretty unforgiving. I didn't die a lot throughout the course of this game, uh, there are chase sequences and things like that, but I never died to those. But these sequences with the puzzles specifically with fail states felt really unforgiving and just too long. Complimentary good thing I really like though, the controls, even on mouse and keyboard, are pretty great. And everything feels super responsive, and honestly, it's just pretty simple. I like it. But continuing on with my criticisms of the puzzles themselves, overall I think they're pretty hit or miss. Some feel too complicated and spread out for their own good. And another thing about the puzzles that I think, rather than missing, that they actually do hit is the idea that they do have that eureka moment, where the game kind of transcends these shallow lows and gives some amazing highs. These satisfying puzzles always involve the player needing to use their abilities to impact the state of the alien matter scattered all around, whether it be using your blue ability to melt the matter, the red ability to solidify it, or even some combination of the two, there's always new ways to use the physics and the platforming styles of challenges, and I really enjoy how they implement a lot of these. Ultimately, Somerville is a game that had predetermined expectations from many fans going in, myself included. While there are big steps taken to subvert these expectations, in the end it just doesn't pan out. My biggest issue, of course, being that the 3D plane doesn't feel very good, and it doesn't feel justified, and it hasn't earned the right to be there. Now next up we have the visuals, and this to me is one of the most striking aspects of Somerville. And I can sing those praises until the cows come home, or I guess rather the aliens? Anyways, the game features that hard, minimalist look that I love. However, while keeping the sharper edges, it still skirts the line of having so much detail poured into every scene. My favorite visual aspect are the alien structures, enemies, and, well, the substances too. The polygonal, symmetrical nature of it all is beautiful and quite the opposite of something like H.R. Giger's Art from Alien. This isn't inviting per se, but there's definitely clear invoking of that feeling of serenity. In the world itself, there's pile-ups of cars in the distance, and of course there's plenty of junk and painstaking detail in the foreground as well. The attention to detail doesn't end there. Walking by a puddle only to realize that those darker pixels are actually fish or tadpoles was really neat, or any number of environmental storytelling that's actually present. On a larger scale, we make our way through a music festival at one point, and as we traverse different points of interest, there's plenty of unspoken stories of peril of how people didn't make it. The world of Somerville is one that's set up so well and actually has a grounded sense to it. Every pixel is meaningful and used to its highest extent. I mean, another great example of the powerful visuals comes by way of its use of color. Red lights and even purple tend to lean towards bad, indicating usually that we need to run. But the hues of green, blue, and the average light source are pretty good, almost as if motioning that this is the right way to go. Not to mention lighting plays a main part of the gameplay mechanic that I've already mentioned. So on top of that, thematically, each of the power's colors are also used to indicate different emotions, I think. And that's really cool to see that play out as well, especially as you get into the final parts of the game. I know I've been saying a lot of praises here, but my experience wasn't without issues. I'm not saying bugs, as I really only had the one where I couldn't walk through the door, but rather issues I had with the core design. 
As I've already expressed, I'm not really the biggest fan of the jump to the 3D environments. With that, sometimes it's pretty hard to parse exactly what you need to do in those big puzzle spaces and even where you need to go. And while the fluidity of traversal animations weren't quite as high as I expected, I have to say that all of the interactions within the world are actually quite incredible. But when you're in a 3D space and you're doing these puzzles and you're not exactly sure where you can go, that's when it really feeds into that frustration. But as I look back on the visuals, I'm really impressed with the look and feel of the game. If there's one thing that gets me excited for Jump Ship's next game, it's the striking imagery that they've already been able to create. But as we move on to the fourth and final category, we have the sound. The sound design is one of the things that I found a little off at times, but it was mostly great. Moving from screen to screen marked a very clear cutoff of certain sounds that shouldn't have persisted even if they were kind of quiet as they moved further away, but there was a clear cutoff as we go from scene to scene. The sounds themselves are all fine, and quite frankly, my favorite effects are those of the aliens and their powers. And those really are just so damn good. Spatially speaking, the sound effects and their distortions through things like echoes are also quite good. And while there is no dialogue in Somerville, the soundtrack more than makes up for the need to convey any emotion. From ominous to horrific, all the way to melancholic, there's a lot to love here. And it really is something that I think is going to serve it well in the long run. And at the end of the day, I think this is another aspect that plays in really well with the visuals to at the very least convey the feelings you need to play, even if the story itself kind of falters midway through. But as I step back from the audio, I believe that Somerville is able to keep its music, sound effects, and even mixing mostly on par with its visual presentation, which is a relatively high bar. But now that I've covered kind of the four main categories for my reviews, I kind of want to finish this out with a final verdict. So as I look back at my experience, Somerville presents itself well. Beautiful visuals that work stylistically only falter when it comes to functionality. The gameplay disappointed me as the jump to 3D never really justifies itself in a way that you'd expect, rather just dragging down other aspects of the game's design. The story is a great sci-fi romp that eventually gets a bit lost in the sauce, but thankfully it reels it in for a pretty great ending. This is, of course, without a line of dialogue. The use of color and detailed environments helps convey a myriad of different emotions that are felt by the player. At $24.99 US dollars, I don't really recommend the game, but if you could wait for say like a 50 or even 40% sale, I'd say that'd be pretty good. Or you could of course play the game on Game Pass. I do think the game is worth your time. But really that's it for me. That's what I do here. My name is Falling Hurts. I review games. I preview games in the sense that I can tell you all about what games are coming out. And more importantly, or less importantly, probably, I have a pop culture podcast called Pop Corner. So check out one of those and consider subscribing. Goodbye.